Oh, what it looks like. I don't know what's happening. Huh. I don't know what's going on here. There's a delay. There's a really, really big delay. I'm not sure what it is, but it's a delay. Um, Stella, I can't let you out right now. But I think that Stella needs to go outside. You know what? Everything that can happen happens when you are ready to go live and you got a good word and um you know it's been mercury retrograde i've been super super busy and it's it's just it's one of them things but i'm here and we're gonna go through that's what's gonna happen we are going to go through and happy sunday and let's get into sunday service i'm trying to pull up some things hold on let's see here yeah I am trying to get, um, she's back here at this door. Yeah, yeah, I know this is live, so whatever's happening, it's, it's happening, right? Um, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Hold on, y'all. I got a good word today. I have a good, good, good word. So, let's just, uh, notify everybody else. While you guys come in, make sure you drop in the comments. Let me know where you're from. And, uh, doo -doo -doo. and we'll get started here. You know, I usually do this before I jump on. Um, but Mercury, again, is retrograde. I don't know why I try to do lives doing retrograde. Because they just don't like to cooperate. But we're going to get it working. Uh, 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 I have a really good word for you guys. A really, really good word for you guys. It's, it's really good. How y'all been doing? How's, how's, how's the year been treating y'all so good? I can see comments, but I can't see comments. So y'all know I'm gonna have to see comments on my iPad, right? Let me tell you. Um, what, what, I, I couldn't see the comments, this, this thing was awful looking on there, so I took that off. Um, I can't see comments here, but I can see them here, so I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to do Facebook. Yeah, now, Beauty Boss is here, and she's over here today, and she's like, what's going on? Because she's like, snap, 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 let's get it together. Um, real life though here, y'all, we got, we got real life things happening here. This is real life. I know that some people get on and they have it all together, but I'm going to show you how to real life and, and this is it. So, hold on. We're going to log in here so I can see y'all comments and I'm going to give y'all this really, really good word. I have been really studying and I've been going through a lot of seeking myself and you know you guys know that when i start seeking i'm gonna tell y'all about the seeking and, and what i found and so i've been really going inward a lot this year this year starting with this year because there's a lot of transformations transformation and changes happening in my life as well i had a lot of things happen last year that were fabulous and then I had things that wasn't so fabulous happen, but that's life, right? But when, uh, what I'm realizing is that when you really, really become diligent in seeking God and understanding God's purpose for your life and getting into that purpose, thank you for the, <laughs> thank you for the super chat, even though it's been rough this morning. I appreciate it. Thank you. I can't even see who sent that yet, but you know I'm going to shout you out as soon as I get this thing logged into. Um, when you really get clear about your purpose, the purpose that God has destined you for, you don't let anything change that, right? And sometimes it seems like the, the, the clearer you are about your purpose, the harder the the enemy the negative influences try to fight you right 
And uh, let's see. Hold on a minute, y'all. I'm going to get this up. Wait just a minute. Give me a second. Let's get this up. Let people know that we're here. This was supposed to automatically go out, but it didn't. We're in Mercury, and we're going to have a solar eclipse. We're going to talk about that, too, today. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff, because there's a lot of good things happening in the in the universe right now. Um, so, okay. Oh, here we are. I can see y'all comments. Yay! Let me turn this down so there's no delay. Um... Let me see. So y'all can see, y'all can tell here that I, I have been working, working, working. Because you see these this puffiness here? Child, look. Life. Let me just tell you. Okay. I think I got it. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, let's see. All right. Let me look here before I start and... Do my um my shout outs. I really, I really just want to jump into it, but I'm gonna do my shout outs first because that's how we roll. So let's do the shout outs first. I promise you guys it's worth the wait. <laughs> the message is worth the wait. Ah, okay, here we go. All right, now I can see you guys. Let's see who's here. All right, good morning. Um, hey, Erica. Good morning, Ken. Um, good morning, the... Hi, Judy. It's nice to see you, too. Did you get my package? Miss Judy, let me know. Make sure you let my team know if you got that package. Um, it didn't come back to us. So I just want to make sure you got it. Um, let's see here. We've got Rashida. Hey, Rashida, thank you for the super chat. That was you who sent the super chat. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, hi, guys. Happy Sunday. All right, so as we jump into Sunday service, now I can see y'all chats, y'all comments and everything. Let's jump into Sunday service really quick. So as I was saying to you guys, I've been having a lot of transformation happening in my own life. And uh, I've noticed that when we get really clear and we get really grounded in the purpose that God has for our lives, things start to really go haywire sometimes. Or it feels like things are going haywire because unfortunately, even if we don't, even if we don't, engage in negative things and negative experiences and negative negative conversations etc it that energy is still out there and one of the things i think that we forget as really truly divine spiritual seekers is that that energy has a job to do too and the thing about that energy is is that it never lets up right? It never stops doing what it's supposed to be doing. It never stops coming for you, coming for you, coming for you. But we have a tendency, right, to relax. We have this tendency to relax in the midst of our blessing. So, we may be being blessed, 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 blessed. You see things happening in your life and they're happening and they're happening and they're happening and they're happening good. You're manifesting all this stuff. You're creating all these things. All these miracles are happening in your life and you get lackadaisical. Now, I'm going to talk about me because you know what? I, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. You know that, right? I and And I don't like telling my stories all the time because sometimes they're not always perfect stories. But I have a tendency sometimes to get in a space of a little bit of burnout and a little bit of being lax because everything is flowing, right? But in order to keep things flowing in your life, you have to be consistent in your work. 
You have to be consistent in your practice. Just like we want God to consistently show up for us and we want God to consistently show up in our lives. We want the universe to move when we ask the universe to move, but we're not doing the things that we need to do to consistently be in place to open and be allowing those movements. I'll give you an example. I had some really big contracts come through, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. You know, I got some really big contracts. I've got some really big things on the horizon. I am going to take a little break, right? Now, listen, I'm not gonna tell you you shouldn't take a break because sometimes we need to take a break, right? But my break turned into like a break. Now, here's one thing about me. I am very consistent in my spiritual practice. I'm going to read my word. I'm going to journal. I'm going to write. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to pray. Those are things that don't I don't vary from. But actually getting into my business and doing things in, in my businesses, I just kind of shut down, right? I was like, y'all handle it. I, I, I need a break. And the break became so much fun. Not that my life's not fun all the time, because it's pretty, it's pretty fun. But, but the break became so much fun that all of the work for Fran stopped. I just stopped. I was just like, okay, I, I'm, I, I'm going I'm to ride this wave a little bit longer. And as I did that, Spirit started to speak to me and say, you have something to do. You have something to do. There are people that are looking for you to show up. There are people who are waiting for a word from you. There are people who expect you to, 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 to have a real um, Instagram or TikTok or whatever once a week. There are people who are waiting on you to do your job, your purpose, the thing that you, you said you would do now We've given you a little leeway. Don't, don't go crazy. During the, during the process of me relaxing, all the negative energy got busy, y'all. It got busy. My team was having issues. Our mugs weren't being printed. Orders were being backed up. Communication wasn't going out like it should. The servers were, were acting out. I mean, it was everything that you could possibly imagine happened. And, and we weren't even in a retrograde. Okay? We were not. But my angels were saying, get back to work. Get back to work. You can have fun, but you have to have a balance. And that's the problem with us as spiritualists, right? We feel like we can do it one time. We feel like we can do it one time and God should just continue to work all the time. We feel like we should tithe one time and God should just pour down all this money forever. We feel like we should pray one time and God should just move for us forever. We don't want to do our parts. And you know what? I know that that's not easy to hear. I, I get it. It wasn't easy for me to hear either. It wasn't easy for me to be reprimanded for <laughs> sitting down way too long. But you know what? I had made a commitment, right? I committed to do this. When God called me to do this, I committed to it. I said, okay, I'll do it. This became my life and my purpose. Part of my life and my purpose is being consistent. Part of your life and your purpose in this life is consistently seeking the connection of infinite abundance and infinite wisdom. It's not a one-time thing. We have to be consistent. And I want to share something to you, with you, that came to me. I read this a long time ago, and I want to share it with you. And that is, faith is released by your spoken word. The universe begins to move by your spoken word. So what does that mean? 
God moves according to what you say. The angels begin to move according to what you say. What you think, you usually say. If you have a negative thought, it's going to come out of your mouth. If you have a positive thought, it's going to come out of your mouth. A lot of us are conditioned to think a certain way. It's the way we were raised. It's, it's our life. So changing the thought patterns around what's really true, the promises of God, the things that we don't hear about, is very difficult. And I've also learned that a lot of people who look like me have a very hard time, especially women, have a very hard time understanding that God wants you to be prosperous and God wants you to have the life that you deserve. A lot of times when I deal with my clients, even especially in this new year, new me reset that we're doing, I have a lot of people who will email me separately or who will jump in the community boards and they'll jump out and, and, and they, they'll start writing, not knowing that we can still see what they delete, right? But they will contact me and say, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing this and I love the steps and I love this course because the New Year New Me Reset is a dynamic course. You should be in the course if you're not in that course in Intentional Living Academy. I think Beauty Boss will probably put the link up here or we'll leave the link here for you. It's a dynamic course. It's such a good course that I, I created it so that you could even pay payments on it because it's, it's so good. I think everybody should take the course. Anyway, in that course, it's restructuring your mindset around limiting beliefs. There is nothing in the word that says that we're here to live a limited life. Like, there's nothing that says you come here, but you can only have this much. What, what it says is that I want you to be prosperous and abundant. Be fruitful and multiply. And that means more than babies, y'all, right? But those are the things that we don't get to hear a lot of. We don't get taught that it is okay to go to God and ask God for what you desire. It is okay. And that by your spoken word, things are moving for you, right? Right? When I realized what my limited beliefs were, what, when I realized how I saw God, right, for the very first time, when I realized that I had such a limited perception of God, I had such a limited perception of what he could do in my life. I thought he could do the small stuff because he was doing the small stuff. Not realizing that I was believing for the small stuff. You understand what I'm saying? I was believing for the little stuff. I hadn't got to the point where I could leap and believe for the bigger stuff, right? So what I started to do, because I am going to research, learn it, write it down, try it, do it. I started doing tithing right? That, that was my first big step into trusting God. When I got my check, which was not enough for me to pay my bills, I would go directly to my word and say, okay, you said this, 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 this. I'm going to give this 10%, this 15%, whatever it is I'm feeling to give today, and I'm going to stand 10 toes down on your word. Not, not five toes. I'm going to stand 10 toes down. At first, nothing was happening, right? There was a couple of reasons why. I was not speaking life over my tithe, and I was sowing into bad soil. I wasn't sowing where someone was praying for me and lifting me up and, 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 and sending me things to motivate me after I tithe, right? So I said, okay, I got to do some research because this is not, it's not working. I'm believing though, God, I'm still going to stand 10 toes down. Found my mentor. My mentor started helping me, educating me on the word, on tithing, 
on the prosperity gospel. Did y'all know that the Bible is full of prosperity gospel? Did y'all know? Let me, let me, I'm going to share something with y'all. Let me share something with y'all. You, we all know the story about the uh, Jesus in the boat with the disciples. We all know that story, right? We know that story. And we know that Peter had told Jesus, we've been fishing all day. We've been fishing all day, Lord. We ain't got no fish. Nothing's biting. This, this, this area is dry. It's obviously dry, Lord. There ain't nothing in here. And so Jesus needed the boat to go do something that day, right? Jesus needed the boat to go do something. And so Jesus said, let me have the boat, Peter. I'll be back, right? So Peter gives Jesus the boat. Jesus comes back in the very spot that Peter said, there's no fish. He said, put the nets down here, right? Peter said, Lord, we were fishing here for, for, for 24 hours and haven't caught a thing. Jesus said, put the net down here. Peter Peter and the boys threw the net over, right? Fish came from everywhere. So much fish, it was tearing through the nets. They were putting the fish in the boat, put, getting more fish, fish. And he was like, who is this? Who is this man? Like, who is this? Basically, who is this? Who is this man? Y'all know what the prosperity part of that gospel is? They gave something first. He gave Jesus the boat. Jesus went and did whatever he needed to do with the boat. He came back and he received the supply. He sowed the seed of the giving, which was the boat. And Jesus came back and said, here's your supply. Time, talent, and treasure. If you don't have no money, a lot of people say, Fran, how am I supposed to tithe? I don't have no money. You got time. You have treasure. You have something you can do. You have something that you can do to help someone else. Now, you should be helping where you get your spiritual feeding from, your nourishment, your person, place, or thing that is supplying you, that has good soil that you know is going to seed the soil, pray over it, water it, make it grow. That was my, my first step to understanding who God was, right? When I changed my mind around it and I started tithing to my mentor because she was feeding me spiritually. That point, I don't think I was going to church. And uh, I would speak life over my tithe. Here's my tithe. I know you're going to bless it. You said give and, it, and we shall receive. I'm giving knowing that you got my back. Every single time I tithe, something happened. There was a breakthrough of some kind. I will sit here and tell you, I've tithed myself to wealth, to millions and millions of dollars. So I moved from that to understanding what the prosperity gospel is. And why come nobody's teaching it? Why is nobody teaching us all of these things? Why? Why are we only getting the bad stuff that, 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 that God doesn't like us and that, you know, we're bad and, and, and you, you, why are we only getting that kind of stuff? Why don't we get the good stuff? I'm going to tell you why. Because the good stuff, they want to keep for themselves. <laughs> That's the bottom line. You can't know that it's not there. It's there. And once you know it for yourself, that's why I tell everybody, study, know the word, know God's promises. Ask God about the people that you entrust with your spiritual health. You can ask God about me all day. Go, he know me. Go ask him. You have to be in front of people and with people who are going to give you all of it. Peter walked with Jesus and still did not believe, had some issues believing. So it's okay if you cannot immediately wrap your mind around it. It's all right. 
But you have to know that you have to build this relationship with God so you can know him. God is the best and biggest manifester that, that, that there could ever be. Co-creating that life of understanding I can have it all because God said it's my divine inheritance. It's the responsibility of God to supply your needs. And he says he would. So then why do we struggle with that concept? Number one, we're very, very human. Number two, what are you surrounding yourself with on a daily basis? Are you being consistent? Are you being consistent? Let me look at what y'all talking about down here. Hold on. Let's see. Okay, Rashida, Dr. Fran, how do you deal with feeling like God is mad at you and you're running out of time? Oh, you know what? That's a very interesting question, Rashida. And I'm, I'm going to answer that question. Because I have been there. I have felt like God was mad at me. I'm going I'm to start with that first. Um, first of all, we have to understand that God is not that type of God. God is not a man or woman that is going to hold grudges against you. He's, he's not going to hold grudges against you. God loves you. And uh, he's not going to be angry with you. Now, I remember when I thought that God was angry with me. I wasn't hearing as clear as I usually hear. And so I thought that I had done something and I was really, really very upset about it. So I would come into my prayer space and I would sit there and I would just sit and ask, please talk to me. Just tell me how do I fix this? Please forgive me. I just I was going through all of the motions of religious things I had been taught. You know, I know I'm a sinner. I'm not worthy. I, I mean, I just I just was going through it. And one day, my mentor told me to come into my prayer space and be quiet. She said, don't talk. You've said all you got to say. You know, just sit. Sit in the silence. And I did that. As I sat in the silence, I began to hear the voice of spirit say, why would I ever be mad at you? You are my child. I love you. There is nothing that you can do to make me stop loving you. That will never change. Then I remembered my mom saying, you have to hold on to God's unchanging hand. God never changes. We're the one who changes. People like to argue that, that, that the same God that walked with Peter and, and, and the disciples is not the same God. But he is. He never changes. Whatever it is that you feel that God is mad at you for, you need to look a little deeper and see if you're mad at yourself about it. And then offer forgiveness to yourself. Because whatever it is, God's not holding a grudge against you. He's not holding a grudge against you. But you may have some solar memory, some unconscious belief that needs to be healed around what you think God is mad at you for. That's one thing. The second thing is time is moving but you always have enough time. I, I, I'm not quite clear about what you feel you're running out of time to do, but I feel like there's something, Spirit is telling me that there's something you're trying to do. And you've, you've been trying to, to do this for a minute and it's not panning out the way you, you want it to pan out. 
And what I'm hearing is that you need to step back away from it for a little bit. When they said a little bit, I ask how long. When Spirit said a little bit, I ask how long is a little bit. And they said seven days. So I don't know what the symbolic meaning of seven days is to you. But they want you to just not think about this, not do it, not participate in it. Just relax in knowing for seven days that after the seventh day, you're either going to receive information or direction or help to, to complete this. You're not running out of time. Time is moving. However, I think that it is a good thing that you are aware of time because by you being aware of time, you won't waste it. We waste a lot of time thinking we have all the time in the world when really we have this moment right now. This very present moment is what's real. We don't have any past. We don't have any future. We have this present moment. And if we, if we stay in this moment and not worry about how this is going to happen or how that's going to happen, you'll see that life will operate different for you. Put whatever it is that you're trying to figure out in, in the hands of, of your heavenly staff. Tell your heavenly staff, here you go, take it. I'm going to lay it down with you for seven days. But God's not angry with you. Just know that he's not mad. He's not mad at you. Blessings with that. You can email my team in seven days and give them an update. I'd like to know what that seven days references for you. Um, I also want to talk about another thing really, really quick. And that is investing in yourself to bring through the breakthrough. So we've talked today about faith activates, faith is activated through our spoken word. But let's talk about investing in yourself to bring through the breakthrough. Now, when I talk about that, I'll use again, me for an example, are some of my students in the Intentional Living Academy. One of the things that I feel that you must do every single day for yourself is set an intention, right? So I get up pretty early in the morning. Sometimes I'm woke up at, at different times and told just to lay in the bed and pray. My prayer life is, is intensive. Um, also, sometimes I get up and I come down and I work the altar that I have for people. A lot of people will have me set up altars for them for different things. And this could be 3.30, 4.30, 5.30, 5.45, whatever. But as I get up and I move through my day, I set an intention for that day with my spoken word. Again, we're going back to faith and things being activated by your spoken word, right? One of the things I say every single day is that something great is happening for me today. Something amazing is happening for me today. That's one of the ways that I invest in myself. Also, besides my prayer life and all of the work that I do, I also invest in people's courses that resonate with my spirit. So if I see somebody who offers something on something that piques my interest, I buy it. I take time, I set a timer, I study it for 30 minutes a day, whatever it may be. I read, I have a library. If y'all can see my wall, like my library wall, I have, a, I have books 
everywhere. I have books everywhere. I also have Audible on my phone. So in my car, I'm not listening to foolishness. I'm, I'm listening to a book. I'm listening to something that's going to keep my mind elevated. I also listen to my Bible in the morning. If I'm not down here to read, if I get up and I'm moving, I'm brushing my teeth and washing my face, I turn on my Bible and I listen to the, the scripture of the day. What do you do to invest in yourself to make sure that you are staying in a, in a space of elevated consciousness? We're not supposed to be hanging down here in this lower vibrational energy. That's just not who we are. It's not who we were created to be. It's not where we're supposed to be. But if we don't align ourselves with some goodness, like to me, Sunday service is, is goodness. I, I love it. To me, hearing my word, reading my word, I love it. Keeping my mind on things above helps me not look below. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm asking you, what do you do? And in the next couple of weeks before we have Sunday service again, because I'm going to start having Sunday service same time every two weeks. I want you to do something to invest in yourself. Of course, I'm going to tell you, go take New Year, New Me, Reset. It's amazing. Best course I've ever taken. However, if you find something, I'm, I'm not a me, me, me type person. I'm more of a us type person. Collectively, how can we get this movement going collectively? If you feel that something else resonates with you, do that, but do something. Because if you sit in the same space that you're in, not getting the results that you want, you're going to continue to sit in that same space trying to figure out why you're not getting the results that you want. If you don't change anything in your life, your life is not going to change. And I can sit here and tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, it doesn't matter how much you pray. It don't matter how much you beg God. It don't matter how much you go to church. If you don't do anything different in your life, your life is not going to change. When we pray, God gives us instructions. If he doesn't give us instructions, he sends a messenger. He sends some way to get us the message. But you have to be available for that. You have to be open for that. You have to be clear for that. So do something for yourself this week, the next two weeks before we come back to Sunday service. And I want y'all to tell me what you did. So let me see here. All right, y'all. Okay. If y'all minds and hearts are clear, mine is. I'm going to go now. And I will talk to you guys in two weeks live for Sunday service. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.